The World Series is over. Congrats to the St. Louis Cardinals. The NBA is on the sidelines, but football, hockey, and soccer are all in full swing. But are you playing or just watching? Today, we're going to climb down from the treehouse to get fit and healthy. Hey guys, congratulations. You are officially more active and more physical than Generation Z, who were the first kids to grow up with the internet. Compared to all of those Xbox and PlayStation fiends of the last 10 years, 12 million more of you are doing aerobics, 9 million more are taking invigorating walks outside, 11 million more are using those scary looking exercise machines that I'm too intimidated to try, and 13 million more of you are pulling on your New Balance trainers and hitting the pavement for a good run. Well, this is great news, especially since team sports may not provide the exercise that you need every day. While of course playing on a team is great for you mentally and physically, it can teach you important lessons in character and courage and endurance and cooperation, but a recent report says that only about a quarter of kids participating in organized sports like baseball, softball, or soccer get the recommended amount of physical activity during practice. As daunting as it may seem, national guidelines recommend that kids break a sweat for at least a whole hour a day. Now, I'll be honest with you, that sounds like a lot, but you know what, you guys got to count recess. Now, here's some surprising news. When it comes to team sports, Ice hockey and tackle football apparently are the in sports to play, while inline roller skating, eh, not as much. I guess you guys like your contact sports. Well, whatever way you like to get your blood pumping, whether you like to play sports, dance, skate, or just run around outside, the most important thing is to get moving. So have some fun. Logan Blake, Gen Z Youth Reporter. Um, why Gen? Well, you know, Logan, I think it's so important for us to educate our children and educate the parents on what it what it takes to have a healthy body. budget cuts now. They're cutting out physical education in schools. We need other programs outside the schools to help uh, keep our kids physically fit. You have to give the, um, the children of today an opportunity to chase their goals, to chase their dreams, but also give them the guidance on how to get there. So you just heard from young people just like you, as well as some former professional athletes about a new movement in America that's designed for you. It's called the Gen Youth Movement, and joining me now is the CEO of the Gen Youth Foundation and a former high school basketball star herself, Alexis Glick. How's it going? Great, how are you? Well, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Now, the, the Gen Youth Foundation is really all about kids. What should young people know about it? You know, we put kids at the center, at the focus. We have a program called Fuel Up to Play 60, which is a partnership with Play 60 of the NFL. And what we do is we teach kids all about how do you become the empowerment in your school, in your environment, from everything from eating nutrient rich foods to making sure that you get 60 minutes of physical activity daily. It's all about how they can change their environment. So we do all kinds of things that will empower them. But if you look at young people, a lot of their decisions are made by their parents, where to eat, what to do. So how do you give young people the, um, the empowerment to actually change 
uh, their habits. It's all about the tools and the resources. It's really important to us to tell the story to parents, but we want the kids to be the ambassadors who are going to go home at the dinner table and discuss what it is that they learn in the school environment. So what we do is we send them a playbook, a list of plays and options that can teach them not only about what are those foods to encourage, why is it more important to have multigrains or vegetables. Mm. So in everything from teaching them about fruits and vegetables and dairy and low-fat dairy, but also why is it important to fuel your body first thing in the day? Why is it important to be physically active? I hear that a lot, that breakfast is like the most important meal of the day. Is that, that true? You know, there is scientific proof that children who eat breakfast and who are physically active are not only better behaved in the classroom and better, um, they're more attentive, but they're yeah. also better academic performers. So one of the things we focus a lot on is how do we make sure that kids today are eating breakfast and one of the most amazing things in the schools is that there are about 55 million kids who go to our schools across the country about 33 of them participate in the free and reduced lunch that's offered inside the schools only about 11 million of them participate in breakfast hmm. and yet it's being offered in every school. Why is the participation rate so low? And how do we encourage them to make sure that they're eating something healthy to start their day? Right. I know in middle school, if I was in like second or third period and I hadn't had breakfast, I was just kind of fading, man. Yeah, Ooh. you're 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 diving. Yeah, exactly. Well, so, so what are some of the uh, the programs that Gen Youth is involved with? So what we do with Fuel Up to Play 60 is, as I said, if the kid is at the center of the conversation, we empower them with those tools and playbooks and resources and so they can do anything from start a walking club they can have a yogurt tasting session so I would like we, to go to that yeah there's some really cool things that they do and so in each school we have a program advisor and this program believe it or not 95,000 schools across the country it's the largest of its kind we're in mm. over 70,000 schools across the country and not only do we give them all the tools and resources but we have NFL players who come into the schools every Tuesday, which is when NFL players have off in season. So on any given Tuesday, we may have upwards of 30 NFL players, both active and alumni, visiting schools across the country. And so they're telling the mm. kids, this is what I do to fuel up. This is what I do to get active. It is absolutely one of the coolest things you have to experience it so I'm taking it when when you know your teacher says something you're like okay my teacher says a lot of stuff but when like an NFL star comes and you're like yes sir what just tell me what to eat and I'll do it right yeah they are so euphoric they're so excited and it connects them um, in many cases sometimes even with these alumni players to the superstars that their parents looked up to and admired but what's really cool about these guys and I've spent an enormous amount of time with the NFL and the players is their commitment to it they so strongly believe in it and if you look at the statistics today just to rattle a couple because they're so frightening, and this is the thing I want parents to hear and I want kids to own. A third of our children in this country are either overweight or obese. A third. A third. And it's not just that we're overweight or obese, but many children are malnourished. So if you look at the 55 plus million kids who are going to school, think about this. Over 17 and a half million children in this country do not know where they're going to get their next meal. Wow. 50% of those calories come from the school day. So we've got to make sure that, first of all, every child gets a meal. Otherwise, they're malnourished. And in some cases, you can be malnourished and obese. So one, they got to get a meal. But two, if this is the main calories that they're going to get in their day, it has to be good calories. So we're teaching kids mm. what are good calories. Because when you're hungry, all you want is pizza and a, and a Snickers bar, right? Yeah, you want yeah, some. But yeah. you, but you got you to do the thing that, that is going to help you in the long run. Exactly. And for us, you know, it's not about a good food, bad food debate. I mean, I love McDonald's french fries. I mean, who doesn't, <laughs> right? right. Um, but it's just about those simple choices, those simple changes. And I can see it. I have three young boys. And we talk about it a lot around our dinner table now. What is it that, um, that, that we can do together that can be real simple, but a difference? What can we try that we haven't tried before? And you know what I find now, especially with my nine-year-old, is that he 
is so empowered in the conversation that my in-laws will call and they'll say, all right, well, Logan says we can't go to so-and-so because we're not allowed to eat, whatever. You know, he once a kid owns the conversation, mm -hmm. they can be the catalyst in the home to make a difference. And we've really seen that in our lives. And we talk a lot um, with our three boys because we're all jocks, including me, <laughs> as you noted at the beginning, that it's just so important to be out and physically active, mm -hmm. too. That makes all the difference. I mean, how often is it that you go out for a run or you go to a spin class and your best ideas come to mm -hmm. life? because you're active and your brain is moving, your imagination is flowing, you get to play. It's essential to success. So I, I, I wanna go back to that statistic real quick. Did you say that one third of all, what, 18 and younger? No, one third of all kids, yeah. Of and all kids. and we're, we're, most of what we target is middle school kids, but we also collect data from, from children who are entering school age from secondary school and up. So one third of all, of, all, all, of all kids are obese. So if, o if Overweight oh, or obese. So if, if someone's watching this right now, what are just a couple quick things that they can do? Okay, now let me just clarify something for a second. Children, as they're growing up at different stages in their life, can technically be overweight on their body mass index. So that's why we say it's overweight or obese, because sometimes kids go in and out of that depending on your growth spurts, right? You remember when you were little, sometimes you're going mm -hmm. up and sometimes you're going out. <laughs> we as adults do <laughs> I was the same doing both thing. in middle school. The most important thing you can do is, um, we, we actually, we talk about this a lot with our kids. Our kids take the food groups to encourage, so multigrains, fruits, vegetables, low-fat dairy, and we put them in like an Excel spreadsheet. How are you making sure each week that you're targeting each of those food groups? So if you haven't had, if you think about what you've eaten today, make sure that you've got a mix of a little bit of everything and make sure you're doing everything in your power to get that 60 minutes of physical activity. Even if that means that part of what you need to do in the middle of the day between class Go up and down the staircase in school instead of taking the elevator. Make sure you walk to school. Find that extra opportunity to exercise and add up those minutes to 60 minutes if you cannot necessarily get it inside the school day. Okay, well, let's. you actually brought a video with you, right? Yes. What exactly is this video we're about to see? So this is all about kids, and um, we've, we have a Youth Ambassador Summit every year where our kids, who are sort of the stars of the program across the country, come to Washington, D.C. And this is a summit that we just hosted in D.C. a couple of months ago, and you're hearing for them, from them specifically how it is that this is empowering them. Awesome. Let's take a look. The way that they are approaching it with Fuel Up to Play 60 is exactly how you need to approach it with kids. You're getting them excited about something. I've told my friends and family about it and they decided to get in on the action too. You can go outside and play football and always eat healthy. We have already started making changes. We're thinking about implementing a salad bar. It's fun because everyone gets to be active and healthy and they get to eat lots of good foods that are also good for you. You're staying healthy and eating right and you're having fun at the same time, so it's a good deal. Wow, that was some great stuff. Thanks for stopping by. Well, thank you for having me. This was awesome. I'm so glad that you're talking to kids. This is who we want to own this. They're the ones who can affect change, so I'm pumped that you're doing well, this. Well, thank you. And speaking of which, if you want to get involved, visit www.genyouth.org. Alexis, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it.